Hello, BAME farm fans. Welcome to another fun farming adventure. Today, we are moving ear corn. And we are selling as much ear corn as we can to this one character with a dump trailer. He has made multiple trips. He wants to buy as much ear corn as he can. In fact, he sent a semi once. And the plan is next week to load that semi again. And hopefully next time I will shoot video, I will be much better prepared to how that whole operation will go loading a semi. I just, I didn't want to film when we first go out when we filled it before. Now this video was filmed back in late November, early December. We went a long time without a video, and I'll some of the explanation will have to do with the title of this video, which we will get to at about the 3 minute 30 second mark. Now, it's part of the reason why I didn't film many videos is I got annoyed with trying to film in a dark barn working on that corn picker. The only thing that I haven't touched yet is the feeder house chain on the picker and some of the related shafts and bearings to that. Uh, I rebuilt the gearbox. It now has a new elevator chain and, and a two-foot wagon elevator extension, plus a new drive shaft and bearings for the bottom of the elevator. That was a nightmare solved by a torch. Uh, but we're all set up thanks to JD Huskers and all their parts. I now have, other than paint, <laughs> Should feel almost like a new picker, right? We got all the husking bed fixed up and did the repairs to the corn head. Which, this ear corn does look fairly clean. I like working in the wagon more than I like being outside. Just because I'm away from all the moving stuff that's outside, like the PTO. <laughs> which has two that relates to our accident. And I don't know how dry this is. We had one load that we sent out that was 16%. And then I picked some right before Thanksgiving that was probably pushing 30 because I could smell the, that, that wet corn smell, like when they're shelling really early in the fall and you just know the corn's too wet. But man, those guys are out there getting it out of the field. Yeah, you can just kind of smell that wet corn smell. I don't think this is quite that moist. So yes, the delay was the unopportune videoing. And the delay we're going to get to here in a second, or 30, is the accident. So, Dad's accident, he got caught in the PTO of the elevator, the elevator we are using here. The good news was it was powered by the TC-30, and I think the most important detail is that the, since the TC is so small that it stalled the track. It would have been much worse if the tractor had not stalled. So Dad's going to hook up. And he won't move far from where he's standing. Multiple times, including the day of the accident, which the day of the accident was the Saturday before Christmas, he had told me to stay away from where he's standing when the PTO is on, to work on the opposite side of the elevator. So I start it. Then we stop. And I give him time to get out of the way. Well, he doesn't go very far. So on accident day, he was sitting right where he is, roughly, on a five-gallon bucket next to the PTO. Similar wagon orientation, where I'm standing, yeah, it's a little tight because the wagon's kinked, but I'm away from the PTO. You know, those big, scary, moving parts that'll just jump out and grab your arm or your clothes or your pants leg. So, you know, I would have been safe, away from it. Well, Dad's sitting right there, especially after he told me not to. Well, where he's sitting... He reached up at one point, he said, to tap the side of the wagon with his right arm to make the corn fall down. Then he stuck his left arm out for balance. I don't know if this was a high wire, stick your arm out for balance, you know, just out in the air, or if he had tried to reach for the side of the elevator for balance. Either way, he missed in a very bad way, and it caught the frayed sleeve of his jacket, which he was wearing the jacket he has on right now, and it wrapped him up. We got lucky it stalled. Another important detail. I wasn't there. I had left to go to church, and I figured I'd be back in an hour, and I'd finish later. Now, I think part of the reason why Dad stayed out when I left was that he didn't want to help Mom clean and decorate the house. Yeah, 
so he stayed working outside out by his lonesome. We figured it took him a half hour to get himself free from the PTO. And this was because he was using a key, a car key, a new, very sharp car key that goes to the F-150, that white truck. Because he couldn't get to his pocket knife. His pocket knife was in the wrong pocket for which arm was free. I don't know which pocket, because he ended up using his left arm, which is more badly injured out of all of this. The only broken bones were five cracked ribs. Apparently his arm survived. Everything was still attached. He didn't want to go to the doctor, so we kind of forced him to go to the ER. He got ten staples in his head. So it took him a half hour to cut his coat off with a sharp key, uh, because he couldn't get to his pocket knife. And the, I guess the most important part was that it wrapped the jacket up, ripped it off, ripped his shirt off, and, but he had his hood tied. So he was pulling his jacket, but it was still tied around his head that he had to cut that string with a key so he didn't suffocate. Well, we're coming to the end. This should hopefully be a big video about PTO safety to stay away from it. I need to get that PTO fixed on that elevator. And then not work alone. A good deal. Just a little bit of corn in the wagon. And that trailer is full. So it took two gravity wagons to fill that dump trailer full of grain that would be as big as my grain truck so 350 bushel hopefully we get about 200 bushel of ear corn on it because these are the bigger wagons this is that new wagon i got last year you can see a little bit of dust left from when we had um soybean meal in it all summer long and have to like power wash the inside of this thing out Maybe I like roasted beans better than the bean meal. I don't know. Both of them have their problems. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna go for it. We're gonna get that last little bit. He's gonna squeeze it all in here, make it worth his trip. Dad is doing much better now. He's nowhere near 100%. They say it could take up to two months for the cracked ribs to heal, but he's moving around now more than he should, taking breaks and washing lots of eggs and not leaving the house. I'll catch you guys later.